scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The moment you are talking of understanding, understanding talks about comprehension. A comprehension of the underlying principles that are responsible for that outcome. Listen, nothing ever happens on its own in this earth. Nothing ever happens, evil or good. Nothing ever happens on its own. Hallelujah. Miracles do not happen just like that. Tragedies do not just happen. Failure does not just happen. Success does not just happen. The anointing does not just come people don't just backslide there is always um certain operations that are initiated whether in ignorance are we together now if i kick this speaker by mistake the pain will not refuse to come to my leg and say i think it's a mistake as far as the system of pain is concerned i did it intentionally are we together now so in ignorance we have activated a lot of spiritual laws and discoordinated them and we have become victims victims of the interplay of those laws it's like cutting a naked wire and putting it on your head by mistake when it's raining now whether you are aware or not the wire will not excuse that mistake will it shock you yes understanding the bible says with all your getting get understanding we celebrate knowledge so much but let me tell you knowledge without understanding is the same thing as not knowing it at all the lot of one who just has knowledge without understanding and the lot of one who does not have knowledge at all is the same their destinies will eventually be the same doom so it's not enough to access knowledge as good as it is access to an information capable of changing you is not enough you must be able to understand the dynamics of its operation this is where understanding comes in gathering the ingredients to make rice does not produce rice it shows you that there is a potential for you to enjoy delicious rice but with the availability of that ingredients you can mess that entire you can waste those ingredients to look like they were not there because there is no understanding it is understanding that will tell you when to apply what one careless mistake and you produce something else that's how life is it's not enough for us to just have knowledge i know i know i know that in the economy of god people should be blessed i know that people can be anointed yes i'm aware i know that people can grow i know that demons are real i know that restoration is real i know that tithing and offering helps people to be blessed that level of knowledge has too much vagueness there is no comprehension of the dynamics tithing blesses people but what is the operation behind it restoration is a possibility but what is the key that activates it rising from glory to glory excelling in the midst of recession is a possibility rising without any support uncle auntie whatsoever is possible but do you understand the dynamics that activate it 
favor is a provision in the kingdom but do you have do you have an understanding do you have a comprehension you see let me tell you something anything you cannot reproduce again and again you do not understand it's as simple as that it is possible to have a short-term result based on pure luck pure luck you play a football by mistake and it's cause a goal it's still a goal but you may not be able to repeat it again our example of that rice you can mix nonsense and by mistake things just fall in place and you produce a delicious meal but you cannot reproduce it again now let me tell you something many believers including spiritual people are largely celebrators of knowledge celebrators of access to spiritual information oh i know the book of this and that and that it says this should happen and they say wow what a an intelligent quota of scripture cain and abel had access to the same materials but their combinations produced an effect that brought war to one and made another person's sacrifice acceptable you must cry for understanding you must cry for understanding and then wisdom talks of application you see that knowledge talks of an acquisition of information useful information strategic information understanding talks of the comprehension of the dynamics how to make it produce result then wisdom is now the experiential application of what you know understanding a thing and not having the commitment to apply it until it produces result is still nonsense bible tells us that the word of god can be made of non-effect it says the word did not profit them those who heard it not being mixed with faith not that what they had was wrong but it was not mixed with action responses of obedience to validate that they believe god please pay attention to what i'm saying very simple keys but they are responsible for the pain of so many people very simple keys but they can be responsible for the retrogression of a man for ages hallelujah so knowledge talks about the acquisition of information understanding talks of the comprehension the dynamics the working principles that produce that result so you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is you understand the underlying principle and then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow that's just understand that's just knowledge knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom you can know it you can teach it and never walk in it now this is the challenge with men in the body of christ there is hardly i have i've said it again and again that i am i don't think that the body of christ is in ignorance the challenge of the body is not ignorance by the grace of god we have gone past the realm of ignorance there's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it no it may just be presented in another way maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively in more detail and clarity articulated more more intelligently but generally they understand they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and God has declared for us that this is a year of triumph I don't want you see knowledge is to know understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the results in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord 
this thing doesn't work no your not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work I can switch this mic off and, and think because I switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing i can hold a mic i can draw it i can snap with it and never amplify my voice please i want you to be frustrated um not i don't mean it in a negative way but i i want you i think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10 percent of them experientially manifesting in your life nobody works well under such a condition hallelujah you must cry for knowledge it's better for me to know god 10 percent and have an experience of him seven percent that's an a student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know god 60 percent and your result shows two percent that's a very terrible situation some even claim 90 percent and the result is one by the one percent the experience vet your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing if you are not getting it stop running retreat and find out where did i miss it i've just been acting acting without understanding lord where have i missed it because you see life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not hallelujah but the bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not it is my desire from the depth of my heart that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter sooner or later you will see that god's obsession is in our bearing fruit hearing john 15 verse 8 hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want the results you want hallelujah let's get down to the business of tonight extraordinary fruitfulness one time jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the bible says that he saw a fig tree 
and the leaves were green it looked very attractive and then the Bible says that Jesus came very hungry he came hoping to find something to eat and when he came in hunger he saw that tree blossoming yet there was no fruit and then the Bible says he cursed the tree cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again the Bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer a ministry a family a people an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that God is alive fruitfulness is a big deal to God fruitfulness is a big deal to God it's not just a proof that you are growing fruitfulness is a sign that God is not a liar his integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he is not a liar God is a God that expects fruitfulness he gave a parable of the talents Matthew 25 he gave unto one five two and one he expected multiplication he expected fruitfulness the first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful are we together not just subdue not just have dominion be fruitful it was not a suggestion it was a command meaning i have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness Genesis chapter 12 now the Lord had said to Abraham this is the Lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change who will epitomize greatness for the believer who will become the portrait of God's idea of greatness a portrait of God's idea of a blessed man a portrait of God's idea of success a portrait of God's idea of a balanced Christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity he says now the Lord had said unto Abraham get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you verse 2 as at this time this was this was not yet his experience it was God's proposal to him come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing and if you successfully pass through that this will be the result verse 2 and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing verse 3 and then we'll stop there and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that cursed thee and in thee shall how many all the families of the earth be blessed in you through you with reference to you as a foundation as a cornerstone the entire race the entire globe will be blessed now i like us to observe certain things here god meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies with his ideas are we together now having a little influence you would call him a local champion he was not a weak man he was not a failure as it were an idol worshiper and then he tells him let's go to verse one again abraham number one your name is wrong number two your life your philosophies everything i thought he would just beat him and say abraham i have great plans for you the thoughts that i have for you even if you know it i mean he said abraham the first requirement will be to leave your status quo your system listen in the economy of god and in the dealings of god when god begins to do business with a man he never uses you as you are please understand this you come as you are but you are never sent as you are you come as you are and then the first thing god proves in you is humility and meekness 
the beginning of the dealings of God in the life of a man the, the starting point is when God sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the God of the Hebrews and he says Abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out Abraham I know this philosophy has worked for you but before I introduce a higher perspective get thee out I preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to God number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say Lord I am here um, let's just continue the classes and God says I don't know who that lecturer was but when I come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that I isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things we're talking about fruitfulness let's understudy Abraham very carefully because the Bible tells us please give us Isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the Bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom he gives us a figure it personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then he says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and he's my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture it's not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart 
brothers and sisters i submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of christ proud men of god proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your pass and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes i want to be an anointed man i want to carry the anointing i want to carry revelation i want fame i want power no i'm showing you the system of god god's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart colossians chapter 3 verse 16. <clears throat> colossians chapter 3 verse 16. it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your heart to the lord it says let the word of christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance i know i think i know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but i know oh i'm educated enough i know look i'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this I know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life. I know my father is a pastor or was a pastor. I know I was a Bible study coordinator when I was on campus. I know I married a pastor. My husband is a pastor. I know this and that. You see all sorts of arrogant people. Many of us young people are arrogant. I know. I know what to do. I know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents I know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this I know mentality there's nothing I know that drives the Spirit of God like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart i show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before god where you lose the ability to argue with god god i, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. Abraham I know you have servants Abraham I know you have a wife Abraham I know you are a local champion but I'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again Genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye be out of your accolades i am a this i've held 10 crusades i am a man of god i am so 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 and so and so no get thee out of your country get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your father's house onto a land that I will show you are we together you want to be fruitful the first key is that disposition of humility 
everybody say grant me grace to be meek to be humble to be broken hallelujah i will never argue with god's opinion i'm too young i'm too small i'm too naive to argue with god's opinion he's the fountain of wisdom some of us have been trading this childlikeness this this reckless abandon for years and look what he's done look what he's done but there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom and we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever number two genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still the second key listen the second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence ah. i will go i will go anywhere you lead me yeah. i will go lord i will go economy he does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the god i serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with god he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will i leave something i am sure of into something i am unsure of i'm sure of my country i'm sure of my kindred i'm sure of my father's house are we together you are sure of your certificate you are sure of the support of your parents you are sure that if you fail and there is no job your elder sister can be giving you twenty thousand. then he tells you come out to where a land that i will show you do you know what it means to ask an adult, Oga, where are you going? He says, I'm following God. <laughs> he says, I know, I understand where to. And he says, honestly, let me be sincere with you. The only thing I know is the end of this journey. I know that I will become a fruitful man. I know that my name will be great. I will be exceedingly fruitful. That's all I know. The, the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me. But I trust him. But I trust him many of you see great people and think god gave them the details it's faith that opened up the details over people started ministry people god sent people to lands first night they slept under the bridge what are you doing in lagos sir god sent me you are a graduate come along with your certificate he asked me to leave it at home what are you now doing under the bridge this is the only place i know in lagos yet god said you will raise a people listen a man who does not trust god will never experience fruitfulness this our carnal sensual generation that wants oh god you must show me how one plus one becomes two the mission is follow me if you trust him enough follow me i will go i will go where you lead me hey, I will go. listen um, you know me I'm a fan of responsibility I like responsible people but let me tell you something nobody's destiny appears from the beginning the vision speaks in the end it is follow me I asked Jimmy something one time Jimmy sorry <clears throat> let me talk about you again and Jimmy said something to me one time. He said, 
there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great nothing looks great from beginning you only have the architectural plan which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people it is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation then everybody starts saying i used to know a jimmy i used to know promise i used to know pastor alpha don't worry, i know them i remember when we we're taking gary and so on and so forth you see we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start somewhere along the journey we should see results but you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey what you ask for is the word of god that's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser where is the greatness with one palms where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to barb your hair where is the greatness where the only bible you can afford is gideon's international that was given free during evangelism but i know he called me i know there is greatness i i can't show you where it is where are the members where is the tv station where are the workers they are in the loins of trust i trust him i trust him my obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them god is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results it's a joke nobody gets results as an inheritance you get up and start walking on that water is as you walk on the water it begins to part if you are waiting for it to part before you walk you will die there at the red sea because pharaoh is coming tell the people of israel to move forward the bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils did you see his nose physically it was a revelation that was given to a man so he was standing and waiting for them and i can imagine moses coming over 2.5 million people in the next five minutes you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of god to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of pharaoh will come back to kill them and moses said look this is what god told me move forward now bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again know that i died believing and god says that's the person initiating me trust You are seated on the throne. Be my land. You are seated on the throne. Listen. Listen. If you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery. But I perished. The first crusade that we were going to, no money no nothing we had just about 20 people i've shared it with you some of our ladies were climbing the tree firewood yet god told me one day i will bless nations and people are climbing firewood don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life it's a it's a costly statement never use your result or lack of it now to mean god did not speak when God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. 
I'm bringing you intelligence tonight because there are many great men and women refusing to step out especially some of us brothers I don't just mean step out carelessly this fear factor must be broken nobody gives you guarantee when a generation of guarant of guarantors open an account I need a guarantor do business and I need a guarantor what if something happens move on with your life start the building project this risk averse fearful mentality is a sign of carnality it's not play it safe in the kingdom you play it as you trust him when God says move brothers and sisters you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving if it be thou bid me come and he said Peter come come Peter you've never done it but it does not mean it can not be done there are many of us today there are many of our families there are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now God spoke to them 10 years ago they had hundred thousand God said go it can buy one tipper of sharp sand go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil say no 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 you know we're intelligent people we went to school you don't build like that and it's 20 years the person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses but somebody who cannot trust God listen the raw material in God's economy is faith 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 not uncle not auntie God uses men but it comes from God through men to you when you want it from men you will die like a chicken are we together second key trust let me tell you something except it's not the God of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment God himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it all you know oh, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust God I trust God though, except I don't hear him if God says move there is no devil no devil in hell no devil in hell that can stop because it is as you move that you commit him. Your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you. Go and ask any great man in the kingdom. Nobody gave him any assurance. All this auxiliary faith you see people. I love God but what they mean is there is one uncle. The uncle promised me that when it gets too hot I should run back. No. You are not standing by faith. After two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look I, I trusted God it's just that uh, the way this thing is no you are not serious I mean if I perish I perish Lord I would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and God says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame God vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust God that far we never trust God that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, I can't remember when years ago when I was in Kaduna I, I went to do something in Kaduna and I was coming back to Zaria my transport money was not complete I'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete I was hungry and I said I'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 15 era why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two I entered and I ate beans and yam 15 era I knew I was in trouble 
brothers and sisters i remember standing at that road and the spirit of god spoke to me he said stop a car and enter i stopped a vehicle and i entered to zaria i didn't say hey, please I, i'm a man of god there is a call of god on my life it's not clear now but i want you to trust me if i rise you will rise too if i eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith i started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him i knew i was in trouble but i knew i was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um what that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what i had I, i can't remember whether it could bring me or not and the holy spirit told me to enter a bus again i entered a bus someone paid it i stopped at northgate with the same money i was at kaduna it was a message listen i've done stupid things in my life there are times that i believe god well now i don't know whether it's god that spoke to me or not but i remember trekking from area bz to first bank by faith believing there's money in my account they were paying workers and i joined them and when it got to my turn they said there was no money i was not embarrassed i was walking my faith i didn't use that i knew that one day no problem i went there and they said sorry are you expecting a transfer i said yes it has not reflected no problem after wasting two hours of my time i thought it was a waste but now i know it was a school it was my school fees i was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith because there is nothing that god says today that cannot be done listen you don't grow just by reading the bible there must be an experience that will force you force you for as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people counseling is easy but one day god will say mr man you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today walk on this water and you have to stand up and walk everybody say lord i trust you say it lord i trust you say it one more time lord i trust you government cannot assure anybody insurance cannot assure anybody this person talking to you is not daft i understand these things none of those things can ensure you a man who trusts the lord can watch his house on fire and other people are saying hey catch him let him not have hypertension and say me hypertension where is the hand that builds the house in the first place i i don't regret but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes he say i can't lose sleep because my god has infinite supply now that's a man who has been worked on by the spirit high blood pressure depression is a sign of not trusting god period it's an uncomfortable truth but know it there are doctors here ask them young people now you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself is it this room is it that and you are, are you okay he says how can i be okay life no you don't trust god so everybody wants this auxiliary thing ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now shoe car estate it's a joke brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job look at what society is becoming a pastor is looking for quality members now we select the sheep it's not just god that brings the increase god brings the increase we choose 
we throw away some sheep to die then we choose the quality sheep make them whatever it is a pastor or elder or whatever to pin them down and we say we have faith that's nonsense faith is when weak people come to you like david in the cave of adulam and you tell them look i see the grace and the hand of god in you and after three years you produce signs and wonders and they bless them there are people today god has used me to lift i will never be hungry till jesus comes now you would think uh, he's just lucky no sir no sir the beauty is always at the end of it when you start out with god brothers and sisters you must trust him pray one minute and say lord kill unbelief your ministry will depend on his word to grow your business stop harassing people to bless you give you money support you please believe in the name of the lord and let him trust you hallelujah so he told Abraham told Abraham Abraham this is the deal I know you don't know me I'm not the idol you are worshipping leave these people let's go the Bible says while he was going Lot went with him he followed him several things started happening in his life and he said look let's separate and he was on his way going no child do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child you have only waited two years and nobody rests again Lord you promised me that my husband is coming in 2015 what happened with that vision that I saw that he has not landed till now you have prayed you have sold seed you see that's what you see people you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see where is my husband where is my breakthrough and God says look wait down on me I will bring my word to pass and no 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 oh God look I need time is his age is not on my side how old are you are you learning something the price of trust trust is hard work let me tell you something about trusting God there are times you will ask him questions he will not answer you will ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you this is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and i'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time god is keeping quiet he's watching you <sighs> every time god is silent i want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel, he'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. Now, where is your child my child is in my trust coming my child is in my trust Penina is laughing at me don't worry my child is in my trust 
young man where is your God where are the results that at your age nothing is working you are making it look like serving God is a mockery don't worry there are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense then that's when he comes in majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see but many of us don't trust him let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness this ministry you see by the grace of God is a product of trust there are some of you who have lost things lost loved ones against the prophecy God told you keep trusting are we together keep trusting keep trusting because when you hold on and trust him overnight he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible pay attention to what I'm teaching you I'm speaking to you by the spirit tonight because there are people here this your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven you must learn to smile in the midst of the storm it's a sign that you trust him there is nothing happening to you today that is new apostle have not eaten there was a time in the bible women were eating their children you are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this our baby and eat do you know what the bible says can a mother forget a suckling child two women ate one child what hunger then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one and then the other one said no 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 and the other woman said not so and they met a prophet of god and he said by this time tomorrow is the training that takes time the manifestation happens overnight don't ever call god jehovah sharp sharp during training you are joking sharp 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 is during manifestation not training this foolishness that flies around the body of the body of christ that is making us fools we want everything today once there is a little delay people say you don't have faith be careful many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit i've done a teaching here called the furnace of affliction many people i have are talking their nonsense let, let me tell you i'm old enough to know what speed and process is the path to the throne is the cross you will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne if what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross start running away because that's not a throne satan wanted jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne jesus said not so there is a protocol so brothers and sisters when you are carrying your cross like jesus and they are saying physician heal thyself you healed others you raise others what is wrong with you now don't answer them jesus didn't open his mouth wasting his time he just continued carrying his destiny are we together now because let me tell you brothers and sisters behind every glory there is a story you are writing your story now don't be ashamed of it keep trusting don't be ashamed that you did eat and lie no people get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace my melody in the center of the storm you gave me a brand new song to sing to you that's why I will lift up my voice and sing yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, don't rush seasons in your life. What you are running away from today, you will miss it tomorrow. 
what you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking to you by the spirit don't run away from your pain carry the cross pay the price pay it honorably don't tell lies i cannot afford gary now it doesn't mean i'm irresponsible i'm a tighter i trust god i'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness there are so many packaging and lies you borrow hundred thousand buy a shoe buy hair buy a shirt buy suit buy bible buy ipad and say i'm in ministry or oh god walk it slowly you may you may take pap for one week don't be ashamed if a visitor wants to visit you don't beg your friend to go to his house and say that's my house don't be ashamed of your father your father is a carpenter your father is an iron bender <laughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad don't ever don't be ashamed of your pain it is what validates your testimony tomorrow when you rise and people say you faked it someone say i knew him oh i knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking gary rejoice not over me my enemy christians hear me i know that you watch those who were your classmates they are going and god is saying wait back don't don't cry don't ever find yourself crying because one step with his voice will over it will give you 10 years result overnight many people will insult me for what i'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path but that's the path to the throne that's where we follow to be where we are today rejoice not over me my enemy stop this life of lies and packaging no the word is working whether you see results or not if you are sick go to the hospital with honor the healing ministry is still on your head it will come it will manifest god told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations and three years into the ministry you have 20 members don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people why fake what will eventually be real lord i trust you oh i trust you i trust you i trust you and i rejoice i'm not ashamed of my pain i'm not ashamed of where i am if all i can take today is gary i take it with honor and pride if you visit me you will join me taking that gary if you think you are too big no problem i honor you but don't rush my seasons let me go through it let me go through it i know we started ministry together now you have 1000 members i have 10 members our anointings are not the same the higher the anointing the deeper the call the higher the anointing the more the greater the weight unhealthy comparison all kinds of things destroying the body of christ when you want a genuine anointing you must be ready to dig deep you must be ready to dig deep there are times god will tell other come to sin other ladies will be moving and god will say you stay back and you say god you have started with me again god says just walk with me see let me tell you if your work with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not working with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then he keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you and says, Pastor Alpha is not, a, he's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head 
and then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you pay for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves, but God will isolate you and put you. It's amazing. A husband and his wife can be married, but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves. That's the dealings of God. That's why you must be sensitive. That's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons. A time will happen, you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor. Don't think he's stupid. It's not depression. It's a season. Even him, he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him. And women like knowing, my husband, what is it that I'm not cooking well for? He says, look, you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace. Just stay there. When I win, I will let you know. And the man says, this is the valley of the shadow of death. I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there and you see him wake up time to eat a delicious meal he just turns that plate upside down and there's no appetite listen the training of a spiritual man is hard this is why you talk about them in the secret God will punish you in the open you don't know what is a covenant pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit Psalm 50 verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice for every time you cry and still trust him it's a covenant you are entering with him you may not know for every time he did not show up and people say where is your god and you frown back in shame and say lord i didn't have an answer for them but you are still my god it's a covenant you are entering somebody insults that altar is a joke i taught you on altars last week no sir that's why when you hear certain men of god talk you think he's pride you may not respect them but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there god will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years no sir you don't like tonight's message it doesn't look very nice I show you the making of spiritual people you want fruitfulness it's not just a key point a B C D I'm leading you some of you I'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season God said it's your year of triumph welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start it's not a cause listen listen hold on there is a difference between temptation and trials listen let me correct something here god never tempts people where you see tempt written with respect to god it was an error in translation temptation is a trap trial is a test it's an exam god will never tempt you the goal of temptation is to destroy you the goal of a trial is to build you are we together now when those seasons come do not think it is unusual you want power you want grace you want to prophesy to someone you want to speak over people and let them come to testify brothers and sisters it's not suit and tie it's not designers it's a track record it's blood and tears and pain you want god to give you the wealth of nations overnight it will not happen just by luck everybody say trust <laughs> say trust Genesis 17. Let's read from verse 1 to 6. Thank you, darling. Genesis 17. Quickly. When Abraham was how old? 90 years old. Bible students, how was he? How old was he when God called him? Help me. 75. 90 years old. Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing and he was still walking God came and just reminded him hey, my God when Abraham was 90 years old and nine hundred 
minus one the lord appeared to abraham and said unto him i am the almighty god walk thou before me and be perfect you are reading to verse six and i will make my covenant between me and thee and i will multiply thee what say fruitfulness i will multiply you after waiting so long i will still do it exceedingly verse three and abraham fell on his face and god talked with him saying we are reading to verse six as for me behold my covenant is with thee abraham remember the discussion we had in chapter 12 i came to remind you that it's still in force although your life has not seen it continue don't give up let me tell you how to know god is leading you sometimes in the midst of that fire help will not come it's a reminder you know how an alarm is tan 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 i know that fire is roasting you but just calm down i'm still alive god where are you i've always been there watching you so he's reminding abraham thou shalt be a father of many nations just an updated translation of genesis 12 read on neither shall thy name anymore be called abraham but thy name shall be called what abraham for a father of many nations have i made thee verse six and i will make thee exceedingly fruitful and i will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee abraham continue Abraham continue it's been five years so God every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away God says I know exactly what I'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and God says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing I can tell you the dealings of God with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to god has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not god's way you will leave that child there that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born it is the giving birth that will bring people to you they won't just come to visit you for nothing except god has not spoken you will see triumph this year forget whatever it is that is happening except the god of heaven has not spoken you will see it happen i trust him i trust him i trust him trust him show us the ancient path would you lead us along eternal highway we want to walk in the footsteps of jesus we want to enter your rest show us the ancient past would you lead us along eternal highway follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest I wish I didn't have to preach this today I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness is just drop money receive an impartation let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden listen this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny there tonight there's no male and female if you want to pass through that road you are genderless when it comes to that that deal you will say reduce the training because i'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit
pass through don't let your tears stop you <clears throat> you may cry oh, but continue God is speaking to someone don't let your tears ever stop you don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say I thought you claim you are called and then because of that you now say okay let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people I'm called God didn't send you you are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation you are joining them together to kill yourself no. Satan came when Jesus was hungry and thirsty and said if you are the son of God turn this stone to bread he had the power to make it happen he said no I don't have to prove it the voice has already declared it with power that I'm the son of God trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray The third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. Write it down. The third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation. When you trust God and you begin to walk with him, he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation. The spirit of revelation is not knowledge. The spirit of revelation is not knowledge. The spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness, but um, how do I put it now? It is, it's really the word intercourse. It's the word koinonia. A sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware, you become an expression of it. The spirit of revelation god begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of god you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must bear fruit listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yeah Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have been reading it, you recited it when you were in Sunday school. But now that you are really in the valley of the shadow of death, that scripture means a lot to you. I fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff they comfort me. And the word comes with light. I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance. I know that many people didn't do it do you know why because there's no need for it in their life you see if i give you touch light in the daytime you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is but if nepa takes light you'll be looking for your phone the slightest light you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it it is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for they won't appreciate it you know 
growing up in ministry i always wondered why in pastors conferences when a man of god is preaching he can say something simple and you see pastors crying they are usually the ones standing up when a man of god is preaching and someone there is just laughing and say guy this man has energy to be standing up then the person laughing now marries a pastor you see that and after five years of hellfire the next time they go for a conference they say let's wave our hands the person is rolling just wave your hands to god and say, i can't wave my hands oh god wave my hand is what i do in my room i will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation some of you what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today the holy spirit will store it in a bank it will be after four years huh four years one night you will pant after this message you will find it you will gasp for it you will borrow phones borrow lantern and sit down and listen to it the price of revelation the bible say buy the truth everybody say the truth is costly say it again the truth is costly yes it will cost you time listen you don't attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you respect to love a thing is to find it desirable to respect a thing is to find it valuable there are two different things you never attract to your life what you love you attract to your life what you honor what you respect to love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable an emotional connect but to respect a thing is to find it valuable it's a right for these words are faithful and true i've been a student in the school of revelation this bible you see when i'm lying down to sleep is on my bed when i wake up is following me wherever I am. forget how old you are seeing it like this this bible has I've worked with this Bible for a while and I have found secrets therein. Secrets that can turn any man to become every word that God spoke concerning him. Nobody will spoon feed you. Thank God for devotionals. Thank God for um, Esau. Thank God for concordances. But brothers and sisters, if you want to know God, you want to grow in the word, you have to sit down. This spoon feeding of believers now I, of course I'm, a, I'm I'm not I'm not against access to devices and things that will help us but there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time I'm too busy I'm too busy then you see your life nose diving they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your Bible only on Friday during koinonia you close it on Friday only to open it on Friday again or on Sunday. That's not a good testimony, let me tell you. You will need to be serious with the word of God. This is like a treasure chest. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word. And I will forever sing your name. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing now for joy. I will see all the wonders of your word, and I will forever see your way. Whatever you spend time with, you become that thing. You spend time in a beer parlor, you become a drunkard, you don't become a, a pilot. In a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm 
you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of god is alive spend time in his presence don't say i'm busy doing what god gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry paid twice hallelujah psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says they know not please give it to us psalms 82 and verse 5 they know not neither will they understand it says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course I want us to look at verse 5 in Amplified. If it's possible, please give it to us. If it's not possible, then we'll just go. Let's look at it. I want you to see the way Amplified puts it. The magistrates and judges know not. Neither will they understand. Listen. They walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. And then he says, all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking. Please go back to King James. Verse 6 says, Have I not said, regardless of your state, it does not change my prophecy. Your lack of revelation and understanding robs you, but my prophecy still remains the same. Have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, Verse 7, tragedy. It says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So I have said you are gods, but it doesn't mean you will manifest it. Between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation, understanding, the working knowledge of the word, the epignosis we call it. Many times God delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are, you are going to be working with like tools. God delays your lifting to help you understand these laws. You don't learn these laws when you are on stage. No. Life is very unforgiving for the unprepared. So he delays you a bit. Yeah. And keeps you so that you will learn it. You never knew that praise was a weapon you thought it was something they do before messages come and then in that cave of adulam the spirit of revelation comes to you and says look praise is not just about singing songs dancing is not just about moving your body clapping is not just about making sounds and he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit your laughter is a mystery in the spirit and all of a sudden you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of god tells you laugh now because you know this law you will not think you are you are you are you are mad you will laugh do you know in psalm 2 let me show you something about laughter laughter is a mystery the irony is that every time god wants to judge he laughs before he starts judgment psalm 2 give it to us why do the hidden rage 
and the people imagine a vain thing next verse the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed saying let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us verse 4 he that seated in the heavens shall do what help me shall do what if we ask promise come if i ask promise to stand here and i say promise talk to us and all of us start laughing at him i mean real laugh some of you the way you laugh if somebody he can even cry just watching you laugh now imagine all of us keep laughing at him what do you think will happen to him let me tell you something about laughter laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil it's a it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know the bible says, rejoice in the lord and again i say rejoice when you see people under the anointing you see them laughing you know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing they are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves they are cleaning their powder and they are, they are instead of them to rejoice whatever made the holy ghost to make you laugh don't you think it's a good thing because when god laughs start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders It's a ministry where as you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of god are we together now i'm explaining it to you so you see she's not the only person who will laugh you'll see people laugh all around but it is by the spirit you can't sit down and be laughing like this that's a beautiful lady if she should watch herself laughing like that she will stop so this is by the spirit it's all right let's let's continue after laughing after laughing what do you think he will do then she shall speak to them in what so that laughter was not just because he's happy he's laughing at what he as a as a principle before you know how somebody's about to beat you <laughs> let me just smile that's what god is doing there it's in your bible i'm showing you mysteries mysteries that all, that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression ask doctors is the absence of laughter when two people are fighting what's the first thing that disappears not love laughter laughter so you turn your way i turn my way and the devil is happy but all of a sudden you see your result or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people and your name is on the list we are being eyeing you we are hoping to drive you and now that we are found and you just tell him god bless you sir you say I, i'm talking and you are still smiling no no i'm not smiling at you sir i'm just god is faithful i'm smiling because i know my god is alive not a sarcastic laugh but a laugh in confidence a brother comes and said i've changed my mind i will marry you again and it's okay god be the glory you can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes just do it it's a mystery it's not about i feel like you are engaging a mystery when you tight you don't feel like you are moved by that revelation listen there are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing the bible says, a merry heart a merry heart not just a merry mouth not just a merry face your heart can laugh too your heart can be happy and it will show i'm not talking of this clownish thing you can be happy the joy of the lord this depression that many of us are carrying you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny you never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling god is alive 
two of us can't be awake if he's awake i sleep mm. laughter and then judgment follows immediately there are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before god and say lord i've cried but i won't cry again and laugh before him switch to dancing switch to praise musician or not if you cannot sing find this high Igbo praise high Igbo praise those people did not produce that album for money you 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 see the consecration in their lives you know they meant it the the, the scriptures they quote before the song starts that's that's called warfare praise don't let people tell you there is no such thing right psalms 149 let the high praise of god be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands there is a warfare dimension of praise when all else fails switch to praise dance your life and turn every hell around the same way yoruba people dance before a rich man they play drums and dance he wants to enter his car they call his name and shake their head and dance before you know it he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for was it not a lady that danced before herod what is it about her dance she danced before herod and removed the head of a prophet what is troubling you is not a prophet can remove the head kenneth copeland asked bishop Oyedeko and said you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith but why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oedeko said he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. Efficiency. knowledge of the principles of the kingdom so you know what to do your rent is expiring that's not the time to pray wrong spiritual approach no it's too late you would have been praying since you saw the signal you have been having a lot of dreams the moment it is quarter to shape don't pray dance rejoice please learn this thing i'm teaching you the weapons of war he said with wise counsel make war quarter to shame get one koinonia message get one worship team people come and give them honorarium let them record something and sing and dance put it in your pocket if all your phone has is movies and games you are not ready for life you must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes you know the song already you bring it out hallelujah and you watch battles turn around overnight overnight battles turn around overnight listen you want to be fruitful the longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge spiritual intelligence knowledge you have trusted god you are humble but let me tell you the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester you see that it's a product of many things god's course is not three credit load it is your desire that can turn it into three credit six credit you can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class and the next class is two years you stay there god's classes is not like a an exact period of three three months no way you can be two years in a class it will give you break then you do another elective and call you back not to a higher cost the same cost let's continue lord i thought we finished no we finished what let's continue but when you are done you will see the value of that thing for a student you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up in the school of the spirit you miss one class that class you have missed will show in your destiny that lecture you did not attend the floor will be very clear in your destiny. God's, God's dossier for attendance must be 100%. Even if you have graduated and you have 89%, you must complete that remaining. 
that's why some of you will be embarrassed that after many years you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic just walk with him walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you you think that you have finished the issue of the flesh and then one day as a great man of God God calls you for a fresh lecture and the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh and you start again don't fight him be humble and stay say Lord help me you thought you have overcome loss for money and then after 20 years of ministry God asks you to go for a retreat and you don't talk about pride whatever God says I just want to kill the influence of mammon and you say Lord I thought when I started with you he said we didn't finish that course I only gave you a break or you stop attending lectures but now that you are ready to come back you don't do superstar with God if you miss lectures for 10 years the day you meet with God again you go back and continue from where you started now men don't expect you to go back this is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when god gives the green light look at david david was in the wilderness and god kept training him with the sleep the moment it was time to destroy goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that i will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill god's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that i coined out that's the name of the system of god's operation he operates in mysteries matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement that person is speaking on the strength of something maybe divination you don't just stand and say it will never happen it will happen until you have a mystery an understanding something you know that can oppose it are we together now yes if i push this guy he should fall down but if he's stronger than me he can create another force that will resist whatever i'm trying to do then he will stand you don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of christ if you know you have power come and kill us in the village and you hear silence no answer the only thing you see is that after one week the only thing you can do is to see you can't talk you can't stand you can't stand up you can't walk that was the answer from the realm of the spirit to you and saying be careful make sure you see god before you stand before pharaoh but by the grace of god with the training you are receiving here let me tell you i pity whoever rises against you one dance one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of god will crumble that person to his knees i tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say lord i am a titan i am a titer i stand as a family we are titers my business is a tithing business devourer i rebuke you 
and satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a titan and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain what do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you do you know there is something you can engage please everybody say after me excuse me say after me in the name of jesus what i need to do in the face of danger in the face of challenges i receive access to it it is costly to stand stupefied watching life not knowing what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do jesus himself knew what to do you find out that you've been married six months People are asking you, Madam, we are not seeing anything. Don't worry. Don't start getting angry and saying, what is your business? No. Just say, Lord, I give you thanks. One year, two years, three years, it looks like no child is coming. Don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying, they are laughing at me. No. Father, I give you praise. Start practicing the law of honor. You see Pastor Alpha and his wife and their child. What do this child want? Oh, this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change I told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging some of us have been sitting waiting if you are waiting to know what to do then that's wise if you are waiting for things to change apostle nobody is coming to marry me engage engage do something Engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere. <laughs> to engage means find someone who has married. Find a family. Find one mother somewhere. You see our mothers all around. One day you can find a mother. Package five for life. Package something. Wrap her and say, Mommy, please. I see that you are married with seven children. They are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be treating for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may god bless you i bless you i remember it was pastor Kore de komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um um was bishop aremu of living faith you know i think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of Bishop Aremu and then she looked at her and said Yusef uh -uh, you've not given birth to, to uh, you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it said take twins Joe like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are carriers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira I don't know how one tier, how much one tier of gari is, you buy it. Buy lollipop for the children. You don't even have to tell them that's why you came. Just like, boy, take. Once they open your lollipop and they're taking, start rejoicing. They are engaging in mystery. Brothers and sisters, those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain. You enter a place to start a ministry. Nobody knows you. You are a young minister. Find the greatest ministry there, Orthodox or Pentecostal. Quietly go and worship with them, whether you believe what they are saying or not. Sit down under that atmosphere. When you worship with them, try to see if you can gain access to the man of God. If you cannot, put a small seed and sow. 
that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials don't sit down and say i'm we are all young people we're not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper god's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we're just talking nonsense there is a way god grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we're going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing i'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace some things cannot be taught they are received but it's not just general anointing holy spirit come <clears throat> is locating people who are carriers of these dimensions it must be working for somebody close to you have the humility to see it a gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car i said really i said so what are you doing about it and he said he's saving i laughed i said that means you are not going to buy a car forever till jesus comes you see a young man and ask him you want to buy a land so what are you doing he said i'm i'm planning uh, for now i have hundred thousand you don't buy land by saving you buy land through favor whatever god gives you is not what you keep to buy land is what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level now many mainstream people again are going to insult me for this thing and never forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people but i tell you this with the integrity of god psalm 45 44 verse 3 give us psalm 44 verse 3 let me show you how to acquire if god wants to give you grace god wants to give you land this is how it comes read if you're a christian want to read 
by their own sword uh -huh. neither did their own arm save them but thy right hand and thy arm the light of thy countenance because thou hast a favor this is how it happens this is how it happens there are graces you must tap into you don't have by default the baptism of the Holy Spirit will not bring those graces for you when you have revelation part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern Dr. Mike Mudo calls it wisdom the ability to discern difference ah, I've been a roommate with promise and I've noticed that my job pays more than his job but he's happier healthier with a lot of money is in my presence I watch people bring him favor it's a sign that there is a grace operating let me tell you something it may be your husband it may be your wife it will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come Marcelina if Marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor I can stand as an arrogant man of God preaching with no favor but through knowledge I want to be fruitful remember I want results I'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness I will discern how do you discern observation observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of God a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well there is a grace you are about to get married as a young couple go and meet them kneel down help her make pepper soup do whatever you do mommy bless us you say ah no don't worry my children don't allow all that greeting to distract you kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head and you you can sow into her life you can say Marcelina sorry let me just help you and worship you. ah no I wouldn't do this you are a great woman of God no. no even if you are the person that got that person born again with respect to what you want to receive you are the lesser so you must humble yourself to receive are we together and you tap into that grace and that man to lands on your head you start producing extraordinary results I'm like a fisherman I know graces that are needed and where they are found and when I when I'm pursuing a grace I'm not embarrassed that's what took me to Canaan land to go and meet Bishop Oyedeko that's what took me to Joss to go and meet Renard Bonke you you fish unashamedly you don't receive impartation from colleagues promise promise we are we are uh, I remember when we were in secondary school can you bless me I'm seeing something working in your life What's it? Can you imagine? Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level, but you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering when she was your age 20 men were looking for her you are almost twice her age nobody is coming tap tap into it somebody who lives in your neighborhood all he has is primary school certificate yet in your presence you are you are joining others to say his money is is charm because naysayers always find explanations once they see someone blessed they have to find something and say that thing here eh, you see it eh, jimmy just leave that guy that guy is a uh, is a there is a spirit don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there there are spirits all around this is the end time be careful be careful don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings when you find out that there is a grace it doesn't have to be from a high man of God some of you this night if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day in the midst of that fight there is a grace tap into it be the one to cook the food tomorrow what's the occasion I noticed three of you in this room there is the hand of God on your life 
sir i notice there is no week that passes without you being favored i want to tap into you may not have money you have polish you can polish a shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it lord this i'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want god to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it. i'm showing you how i live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers i'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of god i've taught you about the mercy of god the mercy of god will turn is is god's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 CGPA 4.7. You think these things are just guesswork? No. You engage mysteries. We are going to pray. Our time is gone. But I want you to cry for fruitfulness. And I want you to cry for discernment. Discernment to know how to tap into graces. Don't sit down and be barren. I've taught you brokenness. I've taught you humility. I've taught you trust. I've taught you revelation. You must camp around the knowledge of the mysteries. And then I've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life. Rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the God of heaven. Pray. Hallelujah. Just three quick prayer points. Prayer point number one. Lord, 
supernatural supply of grace to trust you i will never doubt you again whether i understand what you are doing or not i banish complaint from my life i banish grumbling from my life lift your voice and pray supernatural grace to trust pray pray grace to trust you grace to trust you grace to trust you I want to be extraordinarily fruitful, exceedingly fruitful. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Lord, the mysteries I need to know in this season for the next level of my results. Show me. Give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Show me, show me, open my eyes. Make a parado kapraska dabalakaya. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth. Show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness. The mysteries of restoration. The mysteries of peace. Show me the key, oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house. It's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap. I'd like you to cry to God and say the grace that is deficient in my life, that is responsible for this stagnation, I open up my spirit through honor. I open up my spirit through honor. Lift your voice. Pray this with wisdom. The grace for the gift of man. The ministry of helpers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I know that our time is gone, but I want us to pray. Listen, I want you to know that this house is a house of mantles. This house is a house of strange graces. You know, just last week the Lord did something in my life that He did something in my life that almost brought tears. I said, God, what is this? What is this? What are you doing to me? And the Lord spoke to my ears and said, I would do it to anybody who understands this. It's not the individual that is making it happen. It's what is on you that is producing it. Listen, I want you to pray before I pray for you. Don't be arrogant. There is something deficient in your life that can cheaply bring you to seasons of results you have seen it work in this life you have seen it work in this place lift your voice and cry from your heart and say lord i must tap into it lift your voice and pray
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. My birthday is on Sunday. And every time these seasons come, usually, I don't think of what people do for me. I just think of the faithfulness of God in my life. And I kept thinking, meditating all through this week. And I just felt that if there is anything I can do to the body of Christ, is to pray for you. You have prayed for me, but I want to pray for you. There are things I carry. I've seen very few people carry it, and I don't know why. You don't have to kneel down to stand. I want you to believe it. I have seen certain things in my life and I've seen very few people and it has pained me because these things are for the taking. There are dimensions of graces. But this, this pride, please help me to this one. This pride, honestly, brothers and sisters, hear me. If you believe in this prayer that I'm praying for you, it will change your life. This thing you see is an election of grace. I may be a young man, but there is an ancient mystery on this person you see. I want you to believe it. You have taken all the shame. You've taken all disappointments. You've taken all the pain. You've taken all my sorrows. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my sufferings. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my weakness. Nina Yimaka. Nina Yimaka. Sujana. Nina Yimaka. Nina Yimaka. Don't don't sing. I'm praying for you. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my poverty. You've taken all my dishonor. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my struggles. You have made them yours. You have made them yours. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my sorrow. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my struggles. You've taken all my fears. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my mountains. You've taken all those mountains. You've taken all my mountains. I give you, I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you, I give you, Lord, for everything you've done in my life. Lord, I give you, I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you. I pray for you the power to prosper there is such a grace called the anointing to prosper I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle you have been part of this ministry you have been part of this vision from the depth of my spirit I release that mantle on your life now take it now take it now the power to prosper the power to prosper. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. I release it from the depth of my spirit. The Lord has given me uncommon honor and influence. 
honor is a mantle it can be put on people i decree and declare that everyone connected with this vision everyone connected with this grace right now as i speak may that mantle of honor practically let it land on your life now take it now take it now strength honor grace for influence I know our time is gone but just pay attention you are receiving something that will change your life I decree and declare there is no time in my life where I have needed helpers and men did not rise there is a grace that can bring helpers from anywhere I prophesy to you let help us start appearing in your destiny from today. Let help us start appearing from your in your destiny from today. Hallelujah. I am a product of encounters. Both the ones I prayed for and the ones I did not pray for. Encounters have brought me strange graces encounters of angels encounters with the realm of the spirit i open you up to a portal in the realm of the spirit begin to have encounters from today receive visitations receive visitations receive visitations visitations of angels visitations of the spirit visitations in visions visitations in dreams may they bring you scriptures may they bring you revelations listen a lot of the impartations i've received have come to me in visions where literally in visions i receive impartations i have met with the saints the spirits of just men made this is not diabolism i have received from men in the flesh but i've received from men in the spirit i pray for you in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit every mantle every grace that must make the supernatural begin to work in your life receive it right now in the name of jesus everyone in ministry here from today i launch your ministry to a realm of strange signs and wonders strange signs and wonders strange signs a performance a performance of the world hallelujah i pray for everyone here called into the area of business called into the area of finances or anyone trusting God to lift you there is a grace that establishes men I decree and declare in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ between now and the next 60 days rise to a level you have never seen in your life rise to a level you have never seen in your life hallelujah listen listen I've shared with you the story I don't talk too much about myself hallelujah it was last year right here in three weeks god gave me a gold mine in three weeks god gave me a gold mine 18.7 hectares of a gold mine i never saw it once till i got it there is a grace that empowers men you better believe it i stand here tonight in the name that is above all names i prophesy to you enter into prepared blessings Enter into prepared blessings. Enter into prepared blessings. Enter into prepared blessings. Beyond your certificate, enter into prepared blessings. Beyond your job, enter into prepared blessings. One of the things I've seen in my life 
is supernatural defense and protection there are many of you the moment you are in trouble nobody arises to help you you sit there you fight alone and die alone are we together now i want to pray for you this one i've not seen many people walk in that grace there is a grace that immunes you from trouble we live in a wicked world you don't have to look for anybody's trouble someone just comes and makes nonsense out of your life nobody to speak for you i pray for you in the name of jesus christ the god of israel who has defended me and defended this ministry from today i don't know what brings shame to your life i create a wall of defense around you receive that grace from today in the name of jesus christ i pray for you quarter to shame may help arise for you the last prayer i'm going to pray for you is for speed some of us are too slow and it's not just by god something that will take you two days will take you six months it's not a testimony again I want to prophesy speed he must land on someone he may not come on everybody but Lord God I pray in the name of Jesus Christ the son of the living God I'm praying may somebody here carry this mantle of speed in the name of Jesus speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance speed of performance hear me whoever fights you in the name of jesus the god that i serve that person goes down instantly from today God cannot assume you desire it. Please lift your voice in one minute and cry to the God of heaven. Outside, pray. Those following online, pray. Lord, visit me. Lord, visit me. Appear to me by your word as it were in Shiloh. Pray over your ministry. Pray over your business. Pray over your career. Pray over your destiny. Lord, I came that the gates be open tonight. Pray, pray. That devil must leave my destiny today. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Pray, pray, don't look around. That wilderness must be turned to a fruitful vine. Place something upon my life, oh God. Place something upon my destiny, upon my business, upon my church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
One more prayer point. And the Lord will set this place on fire. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Genesis chapter 21. Read with me please if you are a believer. One, two, read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he has spoken. Lord, do to me as you have spoken. You said many things about my life. Do it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. I've heard you, but I need to see it. Do to me as you have spoken. You said I am the head and not the tail. Do to me. You said with favor, shall you encompass me as a shield. Do to me. You said you will restore the years the canker worm has eaten. Do to me, O oh God. Pray, do to me, O oh God. Visit my family. You said you will wipe away every tears. You called 2019 my year of extraordinary fruitfulness. Do to me as you have spoken. do to me oh God you said I will have my child in 2019 do to me as you have spoken look up I want you to receive every grace that the Lord is going to be releasing in this place because you see let me tell you every grace supplied to you is the strength to survive the squallow of any season and if you do not obtain the requisite level of grace for any season you will find out that your life will remain barren and unfruitful. Truly, I came, I came with all my heart tonight. I, I don't want it to be a miracle service that we just play around casually. Please believe for something to come upon your life. 
believe for a grace to come on your life. See, this thing about anointing, if it's not there, it's not there. Period. Very simple. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want to pray. I'll stand tonight praying on the grace for speed. Hold on, hold on. Please listen. There is a reason why I continue to say this. Many destinies are too slow to glorify God. Are we together now? When the devil cannot keep you at a standstill, then your progress will be so slow. It, he said, I must walk the walks of him while it is day. That means I need to gain time. He says, for the night cometh when no man will walk again. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is a real grace for speed. If you have not seen it, it's because it's not on your life. There is a real grace for speed that vetoes the sentiments of men. So I want to pray. I want to start from there. And then we just allow the Lord to take us. Be conscious of what comes upon you. Be conscious of what comes upon you. That's how God answers prayers. He answers prayers by putting something on your life that will compel creation to begin to act in a way and a manner that will change your life. Are we together? Please lift your hands and let me pray. I believe in the grace for speed. I have seen a measure of that grace and I know it is true that God can shift a man. I'm going to pray and release this grace and inside and outside that anointing and the anointing works. Let me just tell you the anointing works. You will see people begin to run. It's, it's not anything superstitious. It is just the character and the operation of that anointing. We need it. The Lord put it in my heart. We need it for our businesses, ministries, and so on and so forth. Father, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Right now, inside and outside, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I declare right now, at the count of three, let this grace for speed, that you have provided even for this season let it rest on people now i release that grace take that grace now please bring them out take that grace now inside outside everywhere i activate the operation of this grace i shift your life in the name of jesus to strength dimensions in the spirit receive the grace for speed receive the grace for parousia receive that grace for speed in the name of Jesus and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab to Israel I command speed 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 bring them out speed help that woman please my God I'm still praying in the name of Jesus it says ye have encompassed this mountain for too long turn ye not what I prophesy again like 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 fire from heaven let that grace for speed mantle a family now not just an individual let it come upon families families receive speed i shift you i shift you in the spirit new level speed speed bring them out speed you will never be the same never be the same i'm not praying for individuals now i'm praying for families 
any family stagnated here I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost and I prophesy speed inside and outside I release speed right now now the Lord is that spirit he says and where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty the Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing chains on people's legs chains and the Lord is saying the Lord is bringing deliverance now I'm seeing chains if you are under this category as I'm praying now the fire of God I'm seeing fire moving but not on people's heads, on people's feet. I decree and declare, is it not written that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty? At the count of three, anyone whose destiny has been pegged by these chains, I declare, be free now. Be free now. Let the power of God come upon you. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Be free now. I want to pray God I'm telling you I'm seeing this is I'm still seeing it chains you see let me tell you this look up look up the Bible tells us that there are many things that should happen where the Spirit of the Lord is one of it is Liberty do you know what Liberty is It's a separation between you and the obstacle that mocks God in your life there is such a thing in the dealings of God with men has given men liberty I want to pray there will be a mighty deliverance right now many of you this is what has plagued your life if it is true that victory was wrought on the cross then it's time to establish it now please listen to me just follow with the instructions be childlike in your heart and let God give you a testimony are we together now He said, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tears, sowed weed among the, I mean, among the, 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 the wheat. And he, we are going to destroy everything. For this purpose was the Son of God made manifest. I'm going to pray and at the count of three, I will ask you to shout that name. Bye. I don't know what kind of bondage I'm seeing this night but except God is not God you must be free right now in the name that is above all names I pray for individuals and families alike it is true that there are yokes and ordinances of darkness that have held men bound but in the name of Jesus everywhere here overflow one two three outside as you shout that name that is above all names i decree and declare that everything that is not the planting of god in your life and family must jump out of your destiny at the count of three one two three shout jesus i command forces and your go now go now Release destiny. Release destiny. Ela barakatos shepekeretos. Eli abratos kepereketos. Every ordinance that is not the planting of God, let it go now. Let it go now. I'm speaking by what I'm seeing in the spirit. Let it go now. I'm seeing a vision of a man with a handkerchief wiping the tears of a woman and I know that this is, is symbolic because the woman stands for the bride, the church 
and I'm seeing the Bible says he will wipe away every tear I don't know what family and what person came here crying but the Bible says to comfort day that month I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit let an anointing come upon your life now that terminates everything that brings tears that terminates everything that brings tears Bring them out. Hallelujah. Young lady, please shift this one. You, lift your hands. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Yahweh eh. Oh yeah yeah say Oh yeah yeah oh yeah Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah Oh yeah Yahweh Yahweh Oh yeah yeah say friend lift your hands this yes you the Lord is granting you the spirit of revelation I saw something come upon your eyes and the Lord is saying he's taking you to dimensions of revelation let her go now now release her family now in the name of Jesus please listen I, I know that we don't have time but please I want you to every time the Lord shows me this then I know that he wants me to move around I begin to see lights a similitude of angels by my left and right and is is a very is a very mysterious way that God moves to touch people when this begins to happen all I need to do is you don't have to touch me just move around your role listen to me except God is not God as he has anointed as I pass your row if there is anything that is not of God it must let you go are we together now so please you pray the moment we do that then we begin to minister to the sick these things are signs and wonders they are supernatural they are supernatural even by the spirit thank you Jesus please I just want you to believe by faith just believe by faith and then as I pass the Lord is going to touch you it will be the end of it's not something you can do anything about you are under the influence of the anointing are we together now thank you Jesus that everything that is not of God must give way in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare right now by the power of the Holy Spirit let there be liberty now liberty now in the name of jesus madam be free i take it out of your life now the hand of god is upon you in the name of jesus christ receive the lord is touching you i'm seeing god's taking something out of someone's stomach here is going now now i release it now be free now be free now be free now in the name of jesus be free now i'm seeing fire rising from this road just from i don't know who it is but fire is coming on someone from this road Right now, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare. Shh. 
Shala Baruka Tabarikete. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep praying. Something is leaving you. I'm standing here. There is the power of the Holy Spirit is setting someone free here within this place right now in the name of Jesus Christ. 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 In the name of Jesus. Help that woman, please. She's holding a baby. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands here. Everything that must leave anyone, I declare it must go now by the power of the Holy Ghost. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Please, all of you here, just lift your hands. Right now, I stretch my hands. Now, something is coming on people right here. Be free now. 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 Now! Keep praying, lift your voice. Overflow one, keep praying. Something is about to change in your life now. Please, you don't have to touch me. And I want you to help everybody close to you. As I pass, the anointing of the Spirit is touching everything that needs to leave. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. 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 That anointing is touching you right now. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. I take it out of you right now. The fire of the Holy Spirit. Right here where I'm standing. Right here where I'm standing. The Lord is taking something out of your life. Be free. I'm standing here and the Lord is saying it is over. He's speaking to someone, it is over. An anointing is coming on you now. It is over. 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 Shalakata. Over. Madam, be free now. The power of God is touching someone here. In the name of Jesus, be free. In the name of Jesus, be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Be free. Please help them, help your neighbor so they don't enjoy themselves. Be free now in the name of Jesus. I declare and declare be free. be free, be free, be free. Every devil of darkness, be free now. Please open your heart and receive. Stretch my hands here. Anything that is held, be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free. Now. Be free.
free now. I'm seeing a chain, a chain around here. I don't know who that person is, but I lose you now. As I stand here, I lose you now. By the spirit of the living God, I lose you now. I lose you now. Hallelujah. Overflow one. I don't know if I'm able to walk around. It's working now. Please believe. It's a few minutes. God is touching you. You came here so that he will visit you. It's impossible to not testify. Now, please look at me, Overflow 2. I'm not going to pass in your midst. I will walk right here. And as I walk, the power of the Holy Spirit will begin to touch you. Thank you, Jesus. Be free now. Be free now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, now, now. Be free. I take away every reproach. I take away every reproach. You can't stand it. No, it's impossible. It's impossible. We're talking of the anointing here. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. Every reproach, go now. I stretch my hands here. Go now. Go now. Every reproach. Every reproach. Go now. Go now. I release your destiny. All of you standing here, I'm passing now. The power of God is coming on you. Be free. Praise the Lord. Okay. Um, I'm going to walk around. I may not go row by row. Please, let your heart be open. Please. Except God is not God. Whatever it is that has held you, as I pass by the Spirit, the power of God comes on you. Some of you will be receiving impartation. It's not everybody that is going to just be free from whatever it is. Father, in the name of Jesus, honor your word right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Right now, be free. I may not be able to move, but please lift your hands. All of you, at the count of three, overflow three, let me hear you shout the name Jesus. The moment you shout that name, I'm seeing like, I'm seeing like fire coming out of people. This is something living people. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. Be free now. From the front to the be free now in the name of Jesus. I release your destiny now. I release your destiny now. Madam, look at me. I set her free now. Release her destiny right now. That woman you are holding. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Listen, I declare to you. I, I release speed inside. I want to pray that prayer now. I don't know what has slowed you down. Overflow three. From the front to the back. May the grace for speed come on you now. May the grace for speed come on you now. Please, whether you are an usher or not, whether you are an usher or not, help anybody under the anointing close to you. In the name of Jesus, I don't know what has held your destiny bound, but in the name of Jesus, one more time, I want you to shout the name Jesus at the count of three. One, two, three. Be free now. Be free now. You came for a miracle service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look at me. Overflow 3, look at me. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family. I will soon walk out, but 
I just want you to know you are part of the and that it doesn't matter whether you are inside or outside. The Lord is showing me a family here. There is a plague of sickness. Everybody from father to the last child. There is nobody who is fine. Right now as I'm speaking, the power of God is coming upon that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Overflow 3. I'm seeing the number 21. This is the healing anointing coming on 21 people. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. This is not a healing miracle. This is the anointing to heal. Right now from the front to the back. Upon gentlemen and upon ladies, receive that grace. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Receive that grace now. Please everyone, overflow one, two, three, main auditorium. Please open your mouth and begin to pray in the spirit. And declare that everything the Lord is doing must find expression in your life. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice and pray. 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 Voice and pray. God is changing something in someone's body. A blood disease. Just right where I'm standing. A blood disease is living right now. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, let me tell you, 
when when we do these things we are not wasting time at all you need to see what the lord um did in some of those overflows there are people who have real issues and sometimes madam please lift your hands i'd like you to shout jesus as loud as you can Let the name of the Lord be praised. The spirit of prayer. When I was in overflow three, I saw that grace. Would we'll do an impartation, but it's in this season. There is a spirit of prayer and supplication that is coming upon the body of Christ, especially in Zaria. There is a spirit and there is a grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus. Take that grace now. There is a grace and there is a spirit of prayer that is coming upon the body of Christ. You don't pray just by self-will. There is an agency. I declare now in this main auditorium, overflow one, overflow two, overflow three, I stand by the spirit and I declare receive a baptism of this spirit. Flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life flames upon your prayer life i declare capacity in your spirit man capacity i swing open the door for utterance in prayer grace to pray in the name of jesus christ someone in the media stand is receiving a baptism of the spirit of prayer a fresh grace a baptism of prayer hallelujah you see let me tell you this please listen one of the systems for enforcing dominion on earth is the ability to legislate in the place of prayer and when the saints cannot pray and pray with understanding then nothing will change within their territory an attack on your prayer life is a real attack on your spiritual life nobody prays out of convenience there is a grace that must come upon a man to pray hallelujah if you are in ministry i pray again for the grace for prayer let me tell you if you are a man of god and you are not a man of prayer you are not in ministry believe me you are not in ministry it's only a matter of time you will know you are not in ministry i decree and declare a supply of the spirit an ability from heaven upon men and women of god that anyone who has the call of god upon his life whether you know it or not the grace to pray take it now 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 the grace to travail not give me tea and bread not give me tea and bread to pray destiny altering prayers hallelujah praise the lord we'll quickly minister to the sick now um please listen for those of you who are coming for the first time we usually take prayer requests that i pray for now and if you have not written your prayer request please do so you can get a notebook or just beckon on someone by your left and right to just give you an opportunity to write while we are doing that please um i will minister to those overflow one okay the main auditorium and overflow two please listen main auditorium and overflow two um when i ask you to come you will come and stand in front here you'll be ministered to right here overflow one you will stand in front of your projector stand that away from the canopy to allow for space now um Will I call it overflow 2B now? The overflow that extends to second equa. 
Someone will come there to minister. All those who are trusting God for healings, protocol ushers, please just coordinate them. You will stand in front there and then overflow three. Um, okay, there's another overflow down towards overflow three. Um, they will join the ones at they will join the ones at um, the second equa area. So let that be a single overflow too. And then finally, overflow three. You can walk to the front of your projector stand. All of you who desire to be prayed for, we believe in the healing power of Jesus. I believe in miracles. And our time is gone. You'll be ministered to very fast. And then we'll tidy up other things. Whilst that is going on, please, we're trying to conserve time. You see that a, a standard miracle service has to really be a vigil. If you want to do a thorough walk, you're not going to be able to do a thorough walk within two or three hours. But we're trying to just do the best we can do with the time that we have while you are coming out please ushers pr join them or any other department um, to collect the the prayer request those online you can connect by faith if you're trusting god for healing and you can submit your prayer request and then it will be prayed for here praise the lord i believe in miracles if you have written your prayer request, um, the ushers, or you'll find a few people who will lift up your hands or lift up baskets, and you'll be allowed to put it there. Now, very quickly, those trusting God to be ministered to um, for any kind of healing, make your way out quickly, just like I've designated. Please, quickly, you come, stand here by faith. Overflow one in front of your projector stand. Overflow three in front of your projector stand. Overflow 2, you can join um, those in the main auditorium here. I hope I'm doing the right thing. And then Overflow 2B and 2C, let me call it now. 2B extending to second equa and 2C extending to the gate of the third overflow. All of you together will form one overflow and then we'll minister very, very fast very very fast so that we can finish while you are doing that please please let me advise especially for those outside as you are walking out make sure your phones your bags and any of your belonging is safe and then help those under the anointing god is delivering people setting people free and let's just let him be god praise the lord hallelujah except the people ministering to you ask you questions don't worry just a touch and then you be back to your seat and check yourself whether you're on a wheelchair or on a crutch or sitting whatever the situation is whilst they touch and they minister just expect a miracle hallelujah father we give you praise in the name of jesus within the time we have we pray that your healing power will flow let the sick be healed transform our lives visit us in a new way glorify Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray let incurable situations live and I pray God that you give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ in Nigeria
Jesus. Whenever I call your name, you will make a way. Your name is a strong tower. Jesus, your name is a strong tower. These are the guys that came from um, where? You came from Thailand. This gentleman is a professional footballer. Where's your colleague? Where are you? Come. We salute your coming. Both of them are professional footballers. What happened to your legs? Our last league match last year, so I got a fracture from it. And from there, it's affected your career. You're a footballer too. You came all the way from Thailand. You believe Jesus will heal you? These are your... You see, you cannot... I don't even know what this, this does. I asked to stop because they are, we're having some interesting cases today. Please shift. God is doing a serious miracle for this lady. Said she had... Is it ovarian cancer? Ovarian what? Something like that. Mama? Oh, dear. Look what God is doing. She will be healed, eh? Amen. Mm. Because when I looked at her, I did not see a pregnancy. I saw something that looked like a mass of something. This is demonic. Huh? Where are you from, madam? Where did you come from? From I'm from Kano. From Kano? Yes. Jesus, look what is happening. Let her be healed now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mama, don't cry. Cancer, I speak to you. You have a name, you have a voice. Release this lady now. In the name of Jesus. My friend, look at me. 
you came all the way from Thailand in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God this fractured leg I fix it back now you see what is happening to you what do you feel happening to you huh? look at me go run Don't mind them, just focus on me. If you're having pain, we're not acting here. Huh? So if you're having any, a miracle has happened to you. When I held your leg, I felt the power of God moving through you. You see, this thing you see is a very demonic thing. It's not about fracture. Do you understand? Number one, come, my friend. You're together too. I want to pray for you. You see, God is looking for people to represent him in every sphere. Huh? Just because you're footballers, doesn't mean that you ignore God. Many footballers don't love Jesus. They love football and they love the money that comes with it. But we're not only here. God has perfected this. Let me pray on the x-ray, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, let this miracle remain forever. Amen. I want to pray for both of you. I'll, I'll see you after the service and just say hi since you came just to honor you. But listen to me. I'm sure I don't know you. I've never seen you. Can I prophesy on your career? In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, from today, let the anointing of the Holy Ghost. You are a footballer, but you play by the anointing, my friend. It takes more than just kicking a ball. I release the grace to excel. And for you, I release the grace to excel. Right now, two of you will return back to Thailand, and the Lord will honor you. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Thank you so much for your patience. We're about to pray on the requests. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. And I truly believe that as we pray on these requests, that every situation that has defied God, it must answer to the name of the Lord. Let her go now. I curse you by the God of heaven. Out now! Who else? Praise the Lord. Please let's rise. Thank you for your patience. It's a miracle service. If you are yet to submit your request, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hallelujah. We have gotten all kinds of humbling testimonies from this revelation this is this is a revelation that God gave as a communication of his love and the depth of his desire to see people touched not everybody can be prophesied to not everybody may be personally ministered to but this is a representation of your pain is a representation of your expectation and please I want you to believe release your faith you may not have come out requiring healing and with all the ministrations you may not have been directly ministered to I want you to believe because this is representing you before God I want you to stretch your hands here and pray passionately Pray passionately. You're not done. That Lord, this that I'm bringing before you, this will be the last. I truly believe. Make sure we collect for those outside. If you are still being ministered to, no problem. You can just focus while you are receiving hallelujah praise the lord praise the lord i'm seeing fire burn on this thing i wanted to go down on my knees but i just saw fire burning and the lord said i should declare and speak over it I'll declare and speak over it 
um, there is one gentleman and one lady one gentleman one lady the power of God is coming on two of them the moment that happens then I have the release to speak on this these are signs and wonders my precious people sometimes God does these things and we have no idea why he does them a gentleman and a lady this is the sign that God gave me now I'm ready to pray in the name of Jesus believe with me I stand upon this request now and I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit every request laid before God here I decree and declare it lives your life forever please believe please believe we are believers in the mighty name of Jesus Christ hear me the Bible says these Egyptians you see today he said you will see them no more forever therefore I declare that everything that defied the name of the Lord represented here I declare it is buried now and forever every impossible situation written here situations that men do not have the ability to produce or provide I call on the God of heaven the creator of the ends of the earth in the name of Jesus let there be supernatural miracles supernatural miracles let there be supernatural miracles that time we had not started this a woman who had been barren for eight years wrote a request then we had not started this I'm not sure I, I think Koinonia just started and when it was brought to me one of our precious ladies she used to be in the media and I held and I just heard that it was done in the spirit and I said that was it and the woman had three plates one two three now that's not the miracle the miracle is that none of the child had any kind of issue whatsoever three of them are alive today I have seen them they are strong they are fine the Bible says that everybody who ministers should minister according to the measure of grace when you attempt something higher than your level of anointing except God instructs you it is pride we understand our spiritual jurisdictions there are things that you have there are things you may not have now in experience I want to pray for you there is most of the requests here it is favor that will produce it listen listen many requests that we are writing whether it's a whole notebook you could as well get a clean sheet of paper and just write one word favor and that would be it it would still be worth it there are just different versions of expressing your need for favor I want to pray that grace there is a real grace for favor in the name of Jesus Christ favor listen favor is not having money favor is access to the hearts of men it's more than money you can have money and not be favored the proof of favor is not just money the proof of favor is the loyalty of men in the name that is above all names I decree and declare let the grace for favor rest upon you now let it bring about the accomplishment of this request in the mighty name of Jesus there are requests written here it is mercy that will answer it the Bible says even the lawful captive shall be delivered I declare mercy upon this request in the name of Jesus Christ 
father i stand representing the desires the pain of your people you have done it again and again and we will never take you for granted lord let it please you that everyone who has submitted a request may they have the opportunity to stand upon this altar to testify in the name of jesus christ the spirit that brought the need for these requests i banish them from your life in the name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus christ May it please the Lord that testimonies will come out of this. Yes. Now please lift your hands. We're closing. Let me speak over your life. It is always my honor to do this because I have seen the creative power of the word of God. I've seen its ability to turn, to change, to transform lives. There was a very humbling testimony something a gentleman this is something that happened like last week i thought he would come and share maybe he would come down to zaria and testify himself that's why i didn't say it he works in somewhere like a factory or something and he's given the key to the warehouse now i don't know what kind of carelessness happened whether his friends or whatever this gentleman just misplaced the key and these are very serious security keys it's not like something you just carry a stone and hit and buy another one and it became a serious issue for him and they threatened to call the police they threatened to do a lot of things and i was about to sleep when i got his text he had been calling and i said please send the text and he sent it and i looked at it and he said i'm about to lose my job my wife my children this and that and suddenly the anointing of the spirit came upon me on my bed i laid hands and i sent him a text i said find that key that's all i wrote god is my witness i will not stand here at this level and corner stories this gentleman said he just was listening to a koinonia message and he slept i'm telling you the truth under god and he saw me in a dream this is what he said i was not there he saw me giving him the key in a dream he woke up in the morning listen listen that's not a miracle he woke up in the morning opened his drawer and the key was there <laughs> truly speaking you see let me tell you this if you are struggling to believe this you are not a christian because the very foundation of christianity was a strange miracle that a spirit leaves his body and returns back at will please let's not limit god i say these things to challenge us these versions of unbelief we continue to endorse is not going to make our lives fruitful you have nothing to lose to stretch your faith all the way don't they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way hallelujah What is strange about an angel of the Lord coming to drop a key somewhere? Didn't you hear the testimony of the gentleman who a stranger called him and gave him a number? He shared here, you remember? Gave him a number, he calls a general in the army and they say, who gave you my number? And he doesn't know who gave him his number. Bottom line, he gets a job as a result. Look, let me tell you, there is nothing God cannot do. I'm praying for you the dimension of testimonies that will it will shock you the testifier first receive it now receive that strange order of testimonies in the name of jesus christ A gentleman here one of the years checked his name on admission list and clearly saw that he didn't get anything he frowned his way to his father who said you are a foolish son I'm not surprised and he came I don't know if it was miracle service or one of the prayers returns back to the board and checks and there's his name admission list 
see let me tell you this let me tell you this you you are at liberty to not believe but don't say it's a lie just say i don't believe based on my work with god and based on what i have not seen but don't say it's a lie he told nathaniel you will see greater things than this jesus said it are we together strangers that must arise and step in over your issue in the name of jesus i connect you to them i connect you to them i connect you to them by the power of the holy spirit there are times you have the gift but you do not have access to the ears of the kings you will need those who are already in the palace otherwise joseph you will remain in the prison i pray for you whoever has access to the ears of your helper may god compel them to speak about you in the name of jesus christ i pray for everyone trusting god for a job in the name that is above all names please believe and by the power that is in the name of jesus i declare that between now and august by the grace and the name of the lord return with a miracle job hallelujah i pray for those in ministry the fire that must come on a man john wesley says set yourself on fire and the world will come to watch you burn i decree and declare may that fire come upon your life every dying business in this place hear the word of the lord i speak to you come back to life now and to live to deliver those appointed to death there are people appointed to death i heard a man of god give a story of a gentleman who missed a flight he missed a flight and the plane crashed and everybody was happy he missed the flight they didn't know he followed a train that crashed are we together you miss a flight and you are saying lord i give you praise you enter a train and you die these are people appointed to death in the name of jesus death is a spirit it has a voice it can hear i forbid the earth from receiving your body in the mighty name of jesus christ every family under financial captivity every family here and every individual sincerely trusting god to come through for you financially i pray for you may the month of june be your month please believe me may the month of june be your month let the hand of god let the grace of god rest upon you god causing all grace to abound towards you may you have sufficiency in the name of jesus christ every project you have in front of you whether it is a building project whether it's a spiritual growth project whether it's a ministry expansion project whether it's a business project it says the hand of zerubbabel that began this work that same hand will complete it i pray in the name of jesus whatever project you have the grace to execute it let it be given to you now i don't know what has destroyed your appetite for the word of god you will open your bible and look at it like this like a storybook you can read a book of 600 pages in one week but you can hardly finish one page of the bible is an attack i decree and declare let the spirit of revelation and a passion for the word of god may it rest upon you may it rest upon you in the name of jesus christ two more prayer points and we're done 
Herein is our Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The grace for results is called the power of performance. Receive that grace now. I speak to you, produce results. Produce results. Repeated results. Predictable results. In every area of your life, be fruitful in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, let me pray for you. Everything that is alive grows. When you give birth to a child and he cannot walk after three years, no teeth, he can't talk, you know that something is wrong with that child. Are we true? Your destiny is like a child. If it is alive, then it should grow. When a tree grows and begins to mature, it begins to branch are we together now and then it starts to invite the birds it also invites men to come and partake of the fruit i don't know what has taunted your growth in life and in destiny but as we cap up this month's miracle service especially your spiritual life some of you you've not backslidden but sincerely you've been at the same level it's not like you've gone down as it were but you've just rotated around the same experience i declare rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level thank you jesus thank you jesus let me encourage you listen make sure to pay attention to the testimonies that god gives you and be sure to make it a duty to testify let it not be a burden to you are not testimonies don't just endorse that a man of god is anointed testimonies are proof to men to creation to all and sundry that god is love and that he is still mighty testimonies are a tool that consolidates the convictions of men and creates the same in others it's important to not withhold testimony someone's faith is depending on the miracle that comes from releasing your faith so be sure that as god touches you you may not have the luxury of coming down to zaria for those of you who are far but we're on various social media platforms you can always make your testimonies known and then you can contact our helplines and then someone will be there to document your testimony and it will edify the people of god praise the lord still standing everyone our time is gone i want to make an altar call i believe in salvation listen it matters that in a crowd of people like this and many more connected around the world it matters that we give people an opportunity to encounter jesus let's settle down please let me have your attention lend me your attention for a minute or two you are here in the main auditorium overflow one overflow two and all the auxiliary overflows overflow three and online and you know that you are yet to truly surrender your all to jesus and receive of his life or there are others who are saying apostle i have given my life to jesus but i need to rededicate my life to start a work with him that is truthful and serious wherever you are and whatever category you belong to our time is gone just one minute for this aside from overflow three because of time i will request overflow one overflow two wherever you are making this altar call and those in quickly leave your seat very boldly and i like for you to come and stand right here let it be my honor and my joy to lead you to jesus i don't expect you to still be thinking about it the Holy Spirit should already be convicting you. Do not wait for anyone to come. Be the first. Let me for time's sake count one to five. One. Quickly, please, if you're coming, hurry up. Win that war. Do not say we came in group and I do not want anybody to know that I'm handing over my life to Jesus. Receiving the life of God is not a funeral service. Is something that is worth celebrating. Koinonia, are you appreciating them? Keep coming. Come to Jesus. 
young and old come to him the bible says all who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i don't believe this is all overflow one overflow two join them very quickly and the lord added daily to the church as many as should be saved hallelujah praise the lord make sure that overflow three has uh, the people out god bless you i salute your courage please lift your right hand as i lead you to make this prayer you are not just reciting a poem this is a real um conversation between you and the lord you are receiving his life and you are handing over yours say after me lord jesus say it from the depth of your heart lord jesus some of you come for altar call when we are saying in jesus name you are not born again you should come the, the the prayer you don't stroll around and then round up you don't round up the prayer of salvation you participate with your heart man believes are we together okay lord jesus i believe that you are the son of god i believe that you died for me i believe Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.